another episode of Wrestling with the Homies. I am your homie, Cooley. I'm the main good friend, Jay Cooley. What's good, Cooley, Cooley, Cooley. Yes, sir. And my boy, Sylvain Don Sylvain A. Smith. Yes, Still sir. What's popping? You see the ring, good? you know what I mean? What's popping? What's good with this Dolphins jersey, bro? It's a custom. <laughs> yeah. I got the look you know, in the back, you know what I mean? I mean, it's I don't dope. Even watch it's football. dope. I don't even yeah, watch I'm about football. I was going to say, don't though. get me wrong. It's ill, but like you know y'all not in the playoffs right now, right? I don't watch football, Jeez. man. <laughs> Come on, man. Ricky Williams days. Dolphin. Days. You know <laughs> Ricky saying? Williams. Ricky Williams. <laughs> Ricky Williams, man. I ain't watching Marcus football Vick. games. Remember, remember Marcus Vick? <laughs> I don't watch the football oh, games since. Bro, Vick, bro. Marcus Vick. Man, Marcus Vick. He could have been great, but you know. He, was... he could have been. Just like his brother, but you know. He was out here wilding. Out here wilding. He ain't the only one that's out here wilding, man. We... Wrestling news has been crazy this week, man. Insane. Like, bro, it's been haymaker after haymaker. I felt like I was watching the Tay Rock battle. It's just been nothing but haymakers. Don DeMarco. Facts, 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 man. <laughs> and um, it was like, it was some good haymakers. Don't get me wrong. It was some good ones, but it was also some, <sighs> some salacious ones. But we will get into all that later, man. <laughs> but what's good with y'all, man? Before we get into the Royal Rumble, because we did just watch Royal Rumble, but I wanted to talk to y'all for a second. What's good with y'all, man? How's the vibes today? The vibes are high. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing good. Everything's going great. I got a fresh cut. You know, we yeah, fresh the cut off. Good. The cut yeah, I'm good. doing all right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, uh, the Rumble, man. You know, we we fresh off the Rumble. I'm wearing a Dolphins jersey. I don't wear jerseys like that. So I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling you got good. the Caesar? You got the Caesar cut? Got that Escobar Caesar, Caesar, baby. Escobar Caesar 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 has in my parking lot in moccasins. Cooley an idiot, man. Cooley an idiot. Dope, dog. Hey, hey man, I'm cool, man. Look at the sun is out. It's shining. It's a, it's a beautiful day. Hey, uh, finally. It's yeah, been raining man. recently. Like, what's going yeah, on? But it's finally finally sunny out. It was good to see y'all yesterday, too, man. Y'all pulled up. I didn't think y'all. I Like, I knew Sylvan was going to come because Sylvan always pull up for the um the big shows. But Cooley, yeah. uh, Cooley was, weren't, weren't you working? Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My man, well, he he was clocked Maybe. in, but you know he was he was here somehow. Hey, am I snitching right now? Hey, look, what the Wayne's brothers know. used to say: "Shh, don't tell, tell nobody, nobody." <laughs> nobody. Daniel Bryan. <laughs> oh, my boy Brian Davis is snitching, man. But yeah, yeah. man, Royal Rumble was it. Uh, I would say incredible, but I don't want to go too far. It was, it was cool. Oh. It was cool. It was cool. It was. It was cool. dope. It was dope. It was cool. I guess we might as well just get into it then, man. Let's get into the Royal Rumble. So here's where we at with it, man. Here's where we at with it. Cody Rhodes is going to WrestleMania for the second time in a row. That's right. Our boy Cody Trevante Rhodes was our 2024 Royal Rumble winner. Second time in a row. This is the first time that's happened since uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? Yes, yes sir. To go. absolutely. Facts, facts, facts. Couldn't happen to a more deserving person. Now, I look, obviously, y'all know me. I'm a The Rock guy. I wanted The Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania. And maybe we'll get that at Elimination Chamber. Who knows? But... If The Rock isn't in shape to wrestle at this WrestleMania, which is clearly the case, then I feel like Cody Rhodes was the right choice. This is the right person for the job. There couldn't have been a more deserving person because we all know Cody Rhodes had a shot at Roman Reigns last year, and he came up short. And since then, he's kind of been on a big side mission. He had the whole thing with uh, Brock Lesnar. That didn't really lead to anything. He kind of had like a weird tag team championship run with Jay Uso, like that lasted for like yeah. what two weeks. That was filler. very random. Filler, filler for you. It didn't le- lead to anything. And then, obviously, recently we had the whole Shinsuke Nakamura thing, which I was very excited for in the beginning, but that hasn't really led to much either. So it's good to see Cody Rhodes get back on track and finally do what we've been waiting for him to do in the first place, which is chase after Roman Reigns. So it couldn't be a more deserving person than Cody Rhodes. Shout out to Cody. But uh, fellas, I gotta be honest with y'all, I, and I don't know how y'all gonna feel about what I'm about to say, but I just gotta, I got, I gotta be myself, man. I gotta tell the truth on this podcast. I think Cody Rhodes should lose at WrestleMania. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Two, two in a row. Two so, in a row. <clears throat> he he make history winning two rumbles in a row, but then he gonna make history. <laughs> yes, winning absolutely. two manias. Losing Absolutely. Two in a row. I think he should re- lose at WrestleMania. And not only do I think he should lose, but I am pretty confident in predicting that Cody Rhodes is going to lose for a second time at WrestleMania. 
I, I really believe this in my heart. And here's why. Do y'all remember, like, maybe one and a half, two years ago, we got a report that WWE was looking to update its record book, right? So they wanted to replace old names with new names. And because of that, we were going to see longer title reigns going forward. Y'all remember that report? It was yes. like one and a half, two years ago, right? Indeed, indeed. I, I feel like at the time of that report, we all kind of just dismissed it and rolled our eyes. But, you know, looking back, it seems like that report was spot on because we've seen nothing but long championship reigns since then. Like right now, Seth Rollins is on a pretty long reign. Bianca Belair had a very long reign. Rhea Ripley is having a very long reign. And right now, Roman Reigns is 1,246 days into his title reign, which makes him the third longest reigning champion in WWE history, right? Right yes, ahead of sir. him is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is at 1,000. 474 days this means that roman reigns only has 228 days to break hulk hogan's record we are so close to that record that michael cole and wade barrett are starting to reference this record on commentary and that's all fine and dandy right like it's, it's dope that roman reigns is only 228 days away from breaking the, the record but the problem is wrestlemania is only 70 days away and Last time I checked, 228 days is a lot more than 70 days, which means that in order to break this record, Roman Reigns would have to be victorious at WrestleMania, which means Cody Rhodes would have to lose at WrestleMania for the second time in a row. So look, if you a Cody Rhodes fan, man, Sheesh. make sure you celebrate. Be happy for the guy. Go out, pop some bottles, do your thing, because uh, I'm letting you know right now, once we get to WrestleMania... When Samantha grabs that microphone and she says, you're a winner and still Universal World Heavyweight Champion Roman Reigns, it's going to hit like a right hand from Mike Tyson. I'm letting y'all know right now. So, look, be prepared. Just be prepared. That's all I'm saying because it's going to look like a lot of 808s and heartbreaks come WrestleMania. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Why you do the Mike Tyson impression, bro? <laughs> I don't, I don't Why you do the Mike Tyson impression, bro? <laughs> that was nuts. That was nuts. But uh, how did y'all feel, man? How did y'all feel about Cody Rhodes winning this Royal Rumble, man? He didn't have to win. I don't understand oh, why are we doing this, man. He did not have to win. He was going to WrestleMania regardless. He probably could have been in the Elimination Chamber. I don't know if he's still going to be in it. But he was still going to win, and we still was going to see Roman and Cody at WrestleMania 40 regardless. That's true. Did we want to see The Rock? Yes, we wanted to see The Rock. But it's looking like The Rock and Roman is next year. It could be Elimination Chamber still. Like. Who knows? Who knows? At at 3 in the morning? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. We all going to watch. We might not watch live, but we going to watch. Let's, let's be honest, man. We going to wake up at 8 a.m. and press play. I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I mean, I got to work out at 8 in the morning, so I don't know, man. <laughs> this healthy ass. Sylvan, man. <laughs> Give me something, bro. Cody Rhodes going to WrestleMania. Well, my worst nightmare has come true. <laughs> <laughs> what, of course it has. What do you mean? Cody Rhodes has won the Royal Rumble, and he is going to face... Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40, and he's going to lose for a second time. And it's an absolute waste. I'm sorry. I, mm. you know, and I understand. I understand what they're doing. I understand what they're doing with this longest title reign and trying to break Hulk Hogan's record. And I understand Michael Cole is vehemently bringing it up, which means that we are we are on our way there. And I mm -hmm. understand that Cody Rhodes wants to be his father so bad. He mm -hmm. wants to he wants to climb above all the odds and he wants to win the big one when we least expect it. Here's my problem. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about any of that, bro. I don't care about <laughs> Cody Rhodes wanting to be his father and wanting to go be all the odds. I don't care about Hulk Hogan's record. I don't I don't I don't care oh. about it. I I could give two darns about it. But what I do care about at this very moment in time right now is a compelling story. This isn't a compelling story to me. This is just, you know, let's keep let's keep playing 
uh, chase the big one with Cody Rhodes. And you know what's going to happen. We're going to have all the memes. Cody's not going to finish his story again. And look, I don't know how the rest of the world is going to feel, but I don't care. Oh, they're going to be upset, bro. I don't know how the rest, the rest of the world is going to feel, but I don't care about seeing Cody face Roman for a third time, bro. Like, I'm sorry. I don't want to see. I don't want to see it after this WrestleMania. Like Cody Rhodes, just pack it up and do something else, and someone else should take the belt from Roman Reigns. I'm sorry, and it's unfortunate because I think Cody Rhodes is the guy, and he even said it in his press conference. He is that guy. Yeah, he was flexing in that press. He conference. is that guy. <laughs> he was you crazy know? flexing. But you know, but he can't win the big one, and it and and it and it just really it pains me to see Cody be this guy. It, it pains me to see him be his father because we had the same issues in AEW. He put a stipulation on his entire career that he could never win the AEW championship. And here we are again in WWE, and we're going to see him chase the impossible, quote unquote. Right. It's just it's just like I'm I'm personally I personally don't care. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm not a kid. I'm not 16, 17. I'm not seven years old. I'm not eight years old. I am a 33-year-old man, and I have a wrestling podcast with my brothers, right? So I'm part of the, the best IWC. wrestling podcast, by the way. The best wrestling podcast, the best. right? Sm- 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 I don't care about the theatrics of booking in this capacity. So the only thing I care about is what I want. And what I want is Cody to not lose a second time because I'm going to lose interest. I would rather him face Randy Orton at WrestleMania and we just prolong this whole thing to WrestleMania 41. But no, he's just going to lose again and we're going to play the impossible mountain that ever could be climbed so he can win the championship. I don't care. I don't care. It's dumb. It's stupid. I don't like it. But it was the right choice. Punk shouldn't have won. Even though I thought he was going to, it was the right choice. So that's how I feel. And that's being light. <laughs> I definitely thought Punk was going to win the Rumble, man. I've been saying it for the past two months. He shouldn't have won, though. The way that crowd was moving, if Punk would have won, yeah. it would have been disastrous. <laughs> they would have yeah. booed him. They would they have booed. been disastrous. They, they would have booed, booed him. him out of here, yo. Well, lucky for everybody, um, we are not seeing Cody and Roman for a third time because – Cody is finishing his story this year. Yep. You think he's winning? Yep. Ah, Listen, man. Listen, man. I would love for Roman to break Hulk Hogan's record. We all know that. Word to Iron Sheik. You know what I'm saying? We we all want that. (laughs) Facts. But but it's, it's just looking like it's looking like the dominoes are falling in place for Cody right now, man. I feel like... Since we're not getting rock this year because, you know, he wants to build, he wants to pace this story. And I believe that we're going to get that for 41. You don't need a title for that match for Rock and Roman. You don't. You don't need a title. So Cody will finish the story, get the title this year. And then Roman can look forward to the rock, man. And Cody can be the guy that he always wanted to be. That's how Mm. I see it. Not that don't mean that's what I want. But that's just how I see it right now, man. So look, man, got the cover of 2K. He going crazy. So that's the thing. That's the thing. So at the end of the day, like I know, I know how the internet's gonna react to this if Cody Rose does go into Mania and lose. Like I know the internet is gonna react negatively, and it's gonna be like you know WWE is doing a great disservice to Cody Rhodes because Cody Rhodes just didn't win. And it's like, yo, at the end of the day, Cody Rhodes is the face of WWE. He doesn't need a fictional world championship to solidify that spot. He already got it. He's been the face of WWE for two years now. Like, the shoes that John Cena left behind, Cody Rhodes has filled them shits effortlessly. So, that's that's the thing with that. Like, Cody Rhodes is already there as far as being a megastar. So, he doesn't have to necessarily win at WrestleMania to solidify that. But, I would feel bad for him. Like, just watching it as a fan, bro. Like, it's going <laughs> to... Like, as a fan, I'm so invested in Cody Rhodes' story. Like, I, I and I hate to admit that because, you know, I love to put off the, the facade that I'm not really into Cody Rhodes. But 
I followed Cody Rhodes when he left WWE over to AEW. Now I'm saying like I I saw Cody Rhodes put all that work in to get back to this spot. Like Cody Rhodes left as a mid Carter and came back as the main event. That's an ill story in itself. So it's like seeing him finally fulfill that. It would be a dope feeling, but I just I don't I don't see it happening, bro. I don't see it happening yet. At the end of the day. <laughs> At the end of the day, they are referencing Hulk Hogan's record so often on, on commentary. They're telegraphing what's about to yeah. happen, bro. Because if, if 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 Roman Reigns was not going to break Hulk Hogan's record, Michael Cole wouldn't be mentioning Hulk Hogan's record. They would just let that be that. The fact that they're doubling down and tripling down and referencing this record every single time Roman Reigns is on TV, that lets me know, man. Roman is going to break that damn record. We had he we had Hogan for the uh for all the commercials or whatever you call it right too. I was like, what the heck? I just oh, I don't brother. I don't I don't I don't like like you want Cody Rhodes to be Patrick Ewing, like you want him to be Charles Barkley. You want him to be like like you want him to be the guy that was the guy but didn't have anything to show for it. Like you're saying it doesn't matter wants. because. I'm just saying, I'm saying, but I'm saying based off what you're saying, it's like he doesn't need it. He doesn't need to go after some fictional title. It's like, look, look, let's just let's just step, let's just step back. That's let's just step back. Let's just step back. That's what you said. That's what you, yeah, said. you said. Yeah, that's because the he's truth. the man, right? So he's let's just truth. step back. You sound like just, a mark right now. You sound like so a let's mark. Just, let, let's sound just like step a mark. From, sound I'm like saying, a mark. Let's just step back for a minute. <laughs> let's just step back for a minute. This is this is a fictional television show, am I right? Absolutely. Right. So everything is scripted. Everything Absolutely. is predetermined. Absolutely. Everything is made for our entertainment, you know, pleasure, right? Absolutely. But at so, the end of the day, these things are being propped up to seem important, right? Am I right? It's a, tele- it's a television. These show. title these titles are being propped up to seem important, right? Yeah, but they're fictional titles on a television show. Absolutely, but these things are being propped up to seem important, right? What's our main issue when we are not entertained? Things don't seem important. The storyteller doesn't seem urgent. Things don't mm. seem like they're they're going the right way. We're not entertained in a certain way. The only reason why Roman's title reign is even great is because of how long he's had it and how it's made us feel like it's important. Even if it's not important, we feel like it's important. So we got and Cody I, Rhodes feels like he's important. I'm not he's, saying Cody Rhodes doesn't feel like he's important. I'm just saying at a certain point, and this is I just think, me speaking, right? No, I, I, I don't you. care. I, hear I think I, I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying, though. I, I hear you, but I think that you're misunderstanding. I'm not misunderstanding what you're saying. I'm just no, cause, addressing cause, what you're saying. What you're no, saying so, is that it doesn't matter if he goes after the title or not because he's the guy. Not, no, 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 no. That's definitely not what I said. I am you're saying, saying that. Cody Rhodes has solidified his spot at the top of the company. He is in the position that every wrestler on the roster wants to be in. So, from a real life standpoint, this Cody is Rhodes. Does... So, what are you talking about? Just listen, bro. <laughs> you you sound like a mark, man. You, you two invested in the show. It, from a real life standpoint, Cody Rhodes is not being disserviced if he loses this match because it's all fictional at the end of the day. And Cody Rhodes doesn't need a fictional title to to solidify his spot. Now, in terms of the story that we watch on TV, of course I want to see Cody Rhodes win that because I'm invested in that story. But this is bigger than that at the end of the day. The, The sport of professional wrestling is still a business. Like It's not all about what happens on the TV. Let me give you this example, right? Let's say that Tom Holland's Spider, like we all know Tom Holland's Spider-Man, right? Like Tom Holland is one of the best Spider-Mans, right? Let's say in the new Avengers movie, Tom Holland is getting his ass kicked by like Thanos or whoever the new villain is. What's, what's, what, what was Jonathan Major's villain? What was his name? Kang. Yeah, Kang. Well, let's say uh, Kang is, is beating the hell out of Spider-Man, right? This would be like fans at home seeing that and going, damn, Disney is doing a disservice to Tom Holland because they're letting his character get his ass whooped in this movie. It's like, bro, he's the centerpiece of the universe going forward. What do you mean that they're doing him a disservice because his character on the movie is losing? Like, bro, Cody Rhodes is being propped into a prime position. Now, I want to see him win and prosper in the show, but at the end of the day, if he doesn't win, it doesn't negate the fact that his spot is still his spot. Like, he's the man, bro. He's the poster boy of WWE, and that's not going to change. I don't think it's about his spot. I think it's about the booking. 
And I, that's what I'm saying, right? It's like it's not like saying like, yo, if he doesn't get this title, that he's not the face of the company. It's saying that we don't. I I don't know, and I can't and speak I'm, for the, I can't speak for the rest of the people, right? I'm not right. going to speak for the rest of the people, but for me, it's like, bro, I don't want to see this. At a certain point, a storyline. It's like the bloodline, right? At a certain point, I don't. I'm we're lost in translation with the the <laughs> bloodline storyline. This is just going on too long. <laughs> Solo it comes out in the Solo hoodie one. and acts like nobody knows who he is, and it's just like we know it's you, bro. Like Jimmy is and then just he reveals it, like, like yeah, it's like, he reveals it, like it's a reveal, great reveal, like, reveal, oh, like bro, it's Solo, like oh we know it's you. Like, why are you coming out? Of the you hoodie? ain't got shoes on, bro. Of course it's you, dog. <laughs> like, like bro, come on, like we know what time it is. And for me personally, it's not about his spot, right? Like it's about the fact that I don't care about this. Like don't do this again. It's the same thing. It's like. I wish I had a better analogy, man. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like, who, it's like when Cooley talked about the your pops being like, "I'm gonna pick you up today," <laughs> as a kid, you know. And then he doesn't show up, and then he says, "I'm gonna pick you up the next week," and he doesn't show up again. At a certain point, you think it's gonna matter to me if you show up the third week? It's like, bruh. At a certain That's point, really, really I don't know if too. I really want to go through this storyline again. I gotta go through the right. storyline again. What's the <laughs> angle this time? You lost, so you're back. And then you're gonna lose again, and then you're gonna come back again. That's the, the story. He, That's how that you dusty. finish your story. He's doing that dusty thing. That's weak. You know what's crazy? I, I, your story's gonna start to suck, and that's what's really gonna mess things up. The mess things up. It just dawned on me. It just came off the <laughs> wrestling gods. Just like downloaded in my brain. What happens when the story that you're trying to finish has a terrible ending? What Game happens of when you become Game of Thrones? What happens yes. when your story becomes the worst ending in life? Then what happens to to your whole legacy? What happens to the thing that's supposed to solidify you <laughs> hey. as whatever you're supposed hey. to be? You know, I don't when know. Cody, when Cody actually wins that WrestleMania, he gonna look at the he gonna he gonna call this podcast up and be like, "Well, I guess we'll never know." I'm and I, hope, and I, I pray, I pray, yo, nah, I pray, I pray to God, dog, that you not win, Cody. Bro. But you're not, not gonna win, dog. It's not and happening. It's like I don't know if I want to see that a third time, man. Like, and look, I get where you're coming from, Sylvan. Like, honestly, when I speak towards Cody Rhodes' spot in the company, obviously, I'm speaking towards the people online who would say that, you know. Cody Rhodes should have shouldn't have never left AEW because WWE yeah. is clearly burying him. Like, because you know that's coming. Like when, yeah, when Cody Rhodes loses ridiculous. this match at WrestleMania, you know that's coming. People are going to be saying that he shouldn't have never left AEW. WWE is burying him. They're doing him a great disservice because he's not winning matches when it counts. And it's like, all right, the guy's the face of the company, and you think that he's going to cry because he lost a fictional match? Like he just headline WrestleMania for the second time in a row and you're thinking he's going to cry because he lost a fictional match? Like, come on, bro. But that's all I'm speaking towards. I'm not saying that, like, yeah, that's exactly what we want to see or anything, but, like, that's our reality, bro. That's 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 what's going to happen. I'm letting y'all know right now that Hogan's record is going to be broken, and I'm not mad at it because anytime we can erase Hogan from history, I'm cool with that. So if Hogan going down from number two to number three is what's going to happen, then I'm cool with that. I hope Roman doesn't wrestle at all this year. <laughs> like at all. Like Ass I, champion? Like nah, you want a clip? You. you like Quan said, you want a clip? Here's your clip. I hope all for the rest after WrestleMania, I hope all of 2024 that Roman doesn't wrestle a single match until the next WrestleMania. Because who else is he going to wrestle? Nobody. There's nobody left, bro. Just <laughs> solo. just solo. I don't know. <laughs> Like just like just leave him like let him wrestle twenty twenty four I mean twenty twenty five at WrestleMania lose to Cody and we can all just ride off into the sunset man because this is what this is where we're headed we're headed for a three peat we're headed for an unprecedented Cody's gonna win the Royal Rumble at twenty twenty five again again and we're gonna see this storyline again and then it's gonna happen so have fun. My worst, hey, my worst nightmare. I got a question for both of you pass. guys. I got a question for both of you guys. What's that? Name? So, you, uh, clearly, Quan thinks you, he basically don't believe that Cody needs the belt in order to still be that guy to still solidify his not. spot, right? So, has there ever been a wrestler who was always that guy and always had that spot that never had a belt? Uh, I don't think so, to be honest. Like. When John Cena was that guy, he had that belt for the long time. But the thing is, once Cena wasn't champion, the shows were still built around him. The same way right now we're watching Raw. Like, Raw is built around Cody Rhodes. 
Like you can tell WWE is made in Cody Rhodes' image at this point, regardless of the fact that he hasn't been champion yet. And we all know he's gonna get that championship. Like this is not this is not something where like it's a guy like Brian Danielson who's being held down, right? To where the to the point where you start to question, yo, is WWE ever gonna pull the trigger on Brian Danielson or is he just gonna be a med card guy forever? Now, obviously WWE ended up pulling the trigger on him, but this ain't that. This ain't that. When we watch Cody Rhodes out there, we clearly see that WWE is super duper invested in Cody Rhodes. Like his face is on the poster. They advertise shows off his back. He is the guy. So obviously he's going to get the championship at some point. It just might not be this WrestleMania. It just might not be this. It won't. Let's just <laughs> it say won't he's not going to win. It's, like it's he's not, not going, going to, to win. He We're finishing see. the story, uh Come Bro, on. Bro, I don't man. I just I you know, you know, you know, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of a hyper focused Stone Cold versus The Rock. The first time, it was cool. The second time, it was wow. And then the third time, it was like, who cares? It's like, right. <laughs> who cares? It's like, all right, let's just wrap like, it up. Like, we've done this already. But you know what happened? That what happened was that those three matches were spread over a course of six, seven, eight years, I believe. Yeah. Right. We didn't get that back to back to back. <laughs> We're gonna get this Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns back to back <laughs> to back. And by the time Cody wins, I personally am not gonna care. The kids will, and I, I, I'm I'm happy for them. They, they might, will. They will be ecstatic. But we by might the time get a break wins, next year, care. bro. We might get a break next year. It might be Cody last year. Cody that. Cody this year, and then it might be a gap. It might be The Rock next year, and then we get Cody for the fourth year. And by that time, Roman Reigns will have Bruno San Martino's record. Because maybe that's what they're gunning for. Maybe they really are gunning for Bruno San Martino's record, which is I don't know how many days, but it's something astronomical at this point. So maybe that's the deal. Maybe maybe Roman is going to be champion for like five years, and we should just accept it. He should just not (laughs) wrestle for the rest of this year. He shouldn't. He and look, before we get home. out Royal Rumble, man, I I just do, I do want to get y'all thoughts on the rest of the show before, like, outside of Cody Rhodes winning. Did y'all like the Rumble match? A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people were saying that this was a mid Rumble. I like I like. Let me let me say this: the women's match carried the entire Facts. show. Um, it was Facts. stronger than the men's. Um, I feel like obviously. There was no legends this year. None. It was none. I think that's like the first time ever this happened. There, there was no legends. It was all Mick Carters and you know NXT the superstars guys, or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I truly think that Ricochet shouldn't have came in at twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> Love Ricochet, but that's come on, man. What are we doing? Why they set him up like, like that? I don't know, man. Twenty eight, <laughs> like bro, no reaction doing? at all either. Like I feel like we could have <laughs> got, we could have got. Trick Williams instead of Pat. I don't know why that was there because obviously Brock was supposed to be where <laughs> Braun was at. Because you know, I saw that. I saw so that. Yeah, I Trick saw that. You know, we we, we could have had somebody else. Sheamus, somebody. Like, come on, man. Uh, the women's was amazing though, man. Uh, Naomi and Jordan Grace was special. Yeah, that was a dope. That, that was, was good. so that dope. Was good. Um, women's they were crazy. Uh, the Fatal Four was cool. Um. Logan and Kevin Owens. Underwhelming, baby. Underwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Underwhelming. Y'all are bugging. Silvan ah. sat here like, Silvan sat on my couch and told us we was about to see a classic. And we like, all right. <laughs> Match started and it was it was not that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it was a classic. Not that. It wasn't a classic. But it was better than that Fatal 4-Way, though. And that's facts. Yeah. That nah, Fatal 4-Way nah, was yeah. snooze fast. Fatal 4-Way might have been my favorite match on that show, bro. It yeah, was just. You're bugging. You're absolutely it was, wrong. Uh, <laughs> the women's the match was my favorite, bro. Mid. It was great. It was just the we all knew that the outcome because like obviously Roman Reigns is not gonna lose the goddamn title on a random Royal Rumble four way <laughs> like two months before WrestleMania. Like that's that's not gonna happen. So it was it was obvious Roman was gonna win. But the match itself was all right, man. So when you let down by the Rumble match, um, not really. Uh, I didn't think it was mid. I thought it was. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good Rumble match. I think. I honestly feel like the fatal four way was unnecessary and we missed out on three really great entrants that could have spiced things up. Having LA Knight, having Randy Orton and AJ Styles in that rumble would have been really fire. That would have been in a completely different fight, um, completely different rumble. We could have t- taken out Ricochet, JD McDonough, and 
R Truth. <laughs> I wouldn't even take out R Truth because R Truth had the best nah, spot. R Truth had the best spot. Bro. Bro. That tag in, the that tag, tag into the Rumble. That was hilarious, bro. Was absolutely fire. But somebody else could have could have gone, um, or could have not been in been in that Rumble, and those three would have spiced up that Rumble a lot more. Yeah, um, they would have spiced just, it up on their way to losing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they would have still lost for sure, but it would have still been great to see those guys in there, and I, I guarantee you, we would have. The internet would be t- seeing a completely different tune, but it was good. Nah. I don't think it was. I think it was good. I don't think it was great, but it was good. Um, I thought the fatal four way was mid, um, boring. I like just very boring. Uh, I thought, I thought uh, Kevin and Logan did solid. I like the ending a lot. I thought that I did, it was better than that Fatal Four Way. It was a solid match, and it was a lot. And on top of that, that ending was fire. So yeah, the brass knucks. Yeah, that was <laughs> the fire. Ref count yeah, one, two. Two. Oh, I mean, it was like, wait a minute, <laughs> Is that, a brass that was oh, hilarious. Bro. That was hilarious. That was, that was hilarious. hilarious, bro. Look, the internet yeah. was gonna, the internet was gonna shit on the rumble match no matter what, man. The fact that there wasn't a whole lot of surprises outside yeah. of Andrade, the internet was gonna be disappointed either way because the mean, rumors were MJF. The rumors were the rock, and it's like, bro, none of this is ever gonna happen. Like, why does y'all even set yourselves up for failure like that? But yeah, I mean, you know, you know the internet going internet. I mean, I I mean the internet is the internet is mad when there are surprises. So I, I don't <laughs> care. Yeah, like, I'm oh, not that, like that spot could have went to Trent to, Williams and yeah. Carmelo Hayes. It's like, all right, man, y'all I just want to complain. Y'all just want to complain. But uh, let us know how y'all feel down below about the Royal Rumble match. Was it underwhelming, <clears throat> or did it live up to the hype? And also, how do y'all feel about Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble? Do y'all really want to see Cody Rhodes versus Roman for a second time? Should CM Punk have won that match? Should it have been a newcomer like Braun Breaker or Carmelo Hayes? Let us know <sighs> down below how y'all feel about Cody Rhodes getting the second title shot, second year in a row. Sylvan, let us know why you mad this week, bro. Um, Shouts to the Women's Rumble, by the way. They did fantastic. We're gonna get into that in the rundown, man. You we know, got we got women you know, stuff coming. Don't trip. You know, don't trip. Shouts, shouts at home, don't trip. It's coming. It's yeah, coming. shout shouts to the women. They had the, they had the match of the night. Um today I'm not I don't know if I'm mad. Um I don't know. I don't know if I'm I'm mad, but uh I am uh I am serious today. Uh <laughs> because man, we we definitely have to get into this uh Vince McMahon madness yeah. that's been going on. And um I'm just gonna get straight to it. Uh, for those who do not know, um, who are who also watch our podcast, uh, or maybe are just kind of coming across it, Vince McMahon is gone. Yes, the head honcho, the fabric of WWE, Vincent Kennedy McMahon is officially off of the TKO board of members. Vince McMahon has resigned as executive chairman and board member of TKO Group Holdings, parent company of WWE, after a former employee accused him of sex trafficking and sexual misconduct. Now, Mr. McMahon announced he is stepping down one day after Janelle Grant, a former employee at WWE headquarters, filed a lawsuit against McMahon, WWE, and the company's former head of talent relations, John Laronitis. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of the details, but I am going to cover the basics because it is a very touchy read, and I don't want to trigger anybody, and this is something that is still uh, being presented as allegations. According to court documents, Mr. McMahon allegedly pushed Grant into a physical a uh, physical relationship in return for a long promised employment at WWE, which involved a forced Damn. sexual relationship, sharing of private photos and videos, as well as coercing Grant into having sexual relations with other WWE staffers, including John Laronitis. McMahon also subjected Grant to acts of extreme cruelty and degradation and caused Grant to disassociate and or become numb to reality in order to survive the horrific encounters. The lawsuit also states that in a statement with U.S. Today, um, sorry, apologies, Vincent McMahon had his own statement with U.S.A. Today, and he basically said that I intend to vigorously defend myself against these baseless accusations, and he looks forward to clearing his name. However, out of respect for the WWE universe, the extraordinary TKO business and its board members and shareholders, partners, and con- constituents of all of the employees and superstars who helped make WWE the global leader it is today, I have decided to resign from my executive chairmanship and the TKO board of directors effective immediately. I stand by my prior statement that Miss Grant's lawsuit is for. 
basically replete with lies and obscene made up instances that never occurred and is vindictive distortion of the truth. So unfortunately, this is something that we came across a couple of years ago when Vince McMahon essentially was forced to retire because of a lot of lawsuits and allegations that were placed against him. Um, and he took some time away and found a way to get back into the company and become a board member with TKO and also selling the company to TKO. He forced his way back in. Let's be honest. He Let's just be honest. Way. He did force his way right back into the situation. And um, this is really unfortunate. Uh, the details in this uh, lawsuit, I have read some of it, um, and it is very horrific. It's very unfortunate. And um, the, the most unfortunate thing is that uh, things like this, do happen pretty prevalently, prevalently with uh, leaders and people in power. Um, now, these things are still allegations, so I do want to say that uh, we're not here saying that Vince McMahon has done these things, um, but these are allegations that are to be taken seriously, and um, this is also behavior that we have not, uh, that we have also heard from Vince McMahon in the past. Uh, for me personally, this is really unfortunate just because Number one, I never want to see anything like this come to the surface with anyone um, on, on any type of occasion. I don't I don't believe anyone should be subject to this type of treatment on any type of level. Uh, if these allegations are true, this is incredibly horrendous. And I hope WWE is doing everything they can to make sure that something like this never, ever is able to happen again. Um, but the real thing uh, that I that I think like we all are kind of thinking about now is. Um, how long has this gone on, if it has gone on, and also what does this mean for the future WWE moving forward as a whole without the McMahons being in the WWE whatsoever. Um, me personally, I'm kind of glad that Vince is gone. That is a silver lining in this entire situation. Uh, yeah. I believe Vince McMahon uh, should have been gone from this company a very, very, very long time ago. And so I'm very glad that he is no longer anywhere near the company on any type of level. Um, however, I my heart is really with uh, the victims uh, in this situation for even having the guts to come out and plead their case. Um, I know these things are allegations, but also... At the end of the day, being brave enough to speak your truth is very, very admirable. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at with it, man. So, look, I believe all this. I'm, a, I'm just going to complain. I believe everything she said. I believe that Vince McMahon is probably involved in worse things. Like, I don't think this is going to stop. I think we're going to yeah. keep getting these type of stories about Vince McMahon until his death. And even after his death, probably. So my question to y'all fellas is, does this affect your ability to really enjoy WWE knowing that the person in charge was moving like this? Because to me, it's like, it's almost like a yes and no, because it's like, when I go back and I look at like, you know, the Vince McMahon and Stone Cold storyline, which was one of my favorite storylines of all time. It's almost hard for me to see Vince McMahon on screen and really be like invested in what I'm seeing just because I know like, yo, this this dude was a terrible person. Right. But at the same time, it's like. I watch WWE for the athletes, the performers, the people who work hard to put on a good show for us. So it's like my support for WWE is supporting the athletes that's there. Right. I'm not necessarily watching it because I admire the person that was in charge or the person that was responsible for giving me that product. It's almost like being a Cowboys fan. Me and Cooley are Cowboys fans. We Ugh. all know what it is when it comes to Jerry Jones. Like we are not fans of Jerry Jones. We don't like Jerry Jones and he probably don't like us. But at the end of the day, it's like I watch because I support the people on the field. Like I support the players. So it's a yes and no. It's a difficult topic, but man, like knowing that Vince McMahon was moving like this is kind of crazy. Like naming sex toys after wrestlers and like it's just like, what are you doing, bro? What are we doing? So like I'm I'm glad that Vince McMahon is completely gone. It's kind of crazy because this is the first time that WWE or we're watching a WWE with no McMahon involved. There's no Shane, there's no Steph, and now there's no Vince, no Linda. This is a completely new field for us, but man, like I'm, I believe everything about everything she said. Anything she says, I believe it. I'm sorry, but Vince McMahon is not a good person. He's not. 
Uh, I side with Quan on that. Um, everything is true. I mean, this goes back to the '90s. We've heard the stories that he pays off wrestlers and stuff like that. This man has been moving like a uh, a mob boss for years, man. This right. is not this is not surprising, and I truly do believe that stories are going to continue to come out about Vince. Um, keep the McMahon's gone. Keep them out of keep, there. Keep, 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 them, keep far, them away. Far away. S- sorry to Shane's son who looks just like Vince and possibly could have had nice. a great career because I feel like, you know, but he 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 got to take it. He got to take that away. Um, And it's crazy because I remember Stephanie came back, I want to say, around the time the allegations about Vince happened. And she was she she started a chant saying, thank you, Vince. But it's right. like, you know what your pop's doing. Right. But you kind of trying to. And that's the tough part. And that's the tough part, because at the end of the day, like that is like her father. So it's like so it's it's like, how do you go about even move? Like we all watch Succession, right? Like we all love the show Succession. At one point, Logan Roy's dirt was all coming to the surface. And it's like Shiv and Roman and everybody like knew, so to like, so to speak. But it's like at that point. This man is so powerful. Like Logan Roy, who would be Vince McMahon in this example, he's like so powerful. He owns the entire company. He signs my check. So it's like, what can I really do at the end of the day? Like this guy is manipulative, clearly. He owns the entire company and he's abusing his power. What can you do at that point? They voted him out. They 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 ran a coup. They got him out there. And then he pretty much threatened to like not sign off on WWE getting a new TV deal or selling the company unless he was involved. So he forced yeah. himself back into the company. It was nothing they could do at that point. So it's like, it's a tough situation, bro. It's really tough. I mean, look, you know, these are allegations, but the reality is that this man did this shit. I'm sorry. And I don't mean Facts. to cuss. You know, I don't mean to cuss. You know what I mean? Like, I know we are, we are you know, I know my producer is just going to, you know, he, he's, he's We are going to get about. yelled at, brother. We are going to get yelled at. <laughs> we are trying our best to keep the profanity to a minimal. But my guy, he he did that, man. And look, this isn't new. This isn't new from Vince McMahon. We've heard these things from the 90s. We Look, I've watched WWE knowingly that Vince McMahon is a sick man. We watch a lot of movies knowing that Harvey Weinstein was a sick man. Um, we watch, we listen to a lot of music knowing that a lot of those people were sick people and they've done a lot of sick things. And mm-hmm. a lot of that comes down to us being able to separate the art from the person. And yes, Vince McMahon is a sick man, you know, but to say that he didn't revolutionize music, um, not music, didn't revolutionize wrestling or revolutionize the wrestling history or it didn't give us the most lovable times of our entire you know life through wrestling is Mm -hmm. you know we can't do that but yes this man is sick he is a sick man and he should be held accountable and i'm really glad that he is out of the company and um this is long overdue this is incredibly long overdue and it's wild that uh it's wild that it's taken this long and right i mean but at the end of the day i I would assume that it's taking this long because there's been people around that have helped reinforce and keep this what it is, right? Like the head of the head of the table, but the the head of the company, (laughs) the the head of the company, the people who are really empowered can't move this way without an infrastructure that supports and reinforces the behavior so that it continue that it can continue to uh, prolong. So for me, it's like good riddance, but also it's like, it's like, yo, it's the larger issue than just this one man yeah. going out and doing everything. It's a community. It takes a village to raise a child. You know what yeah. I mean? It takes a community to reinforce the thought. So it's not just hey. Vince. It's a lot of the people around him. We see we see you, Kevin Dunn, stepping down like two weeks ago, just you know randomly what I'm out of nowhere. Like, we looking you know at you, Bruce. We see you, Bruce Pritchard. Johnny Ace. It's all crashing down, Damn, baby. It's all crashing Sick down. Freak. But yeah, this is as it was. It was Come crazy. Come on out like, here, you ra- No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Come on, Cooley. Come on, no, man. But, hey, but but like I said, bro. Like I said, man. This week has been full of haymakers, bro. It was like one after another. It was like yeah. watching the yeah. Tay Rock battle, bro. It was one after another. Some good, and then it was just like boom, dark cloud over everything. Out everything, of nowhere, bro. over everything. And this was Rumble weekend, bro. Rumble, Rumble weekend, week, and, bro. Rumble week, and we got to deal with Vince McMahon out here being a freak, like. Come on, man. Come on. Let's not not forget that he had paid 
I believe it was 15 million hush money like a couple years ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're doing that, you know how yeah. you was moving, brother. Like, Wasn't that on, coming man. from company funds? Yes. He I was believe, taking yeah. money from the company and Bro, paying his sick. victims. So it's like, yo, and like obviously for legal reasons, we all we have to say it's all alleged because it because it is. It's all alleged, but I yeah. definitely believe the victims, man. I definitely believe them. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Good riddance, Vince. And I, I got mean, a I got a sorry. bone to pick with somebody else on that too. But we're gonna get into that later. <laughs> oh, I know where you're going with that. I know where you're going with that, man. But um, yo. Let us know how y'all feel in the comments, man. We are witnessing a new era. This is a WWE without any McMahon involved. There's no Vince. There's no Shane. There's no Linda. And there's no Stephanie. This is a whole new territory for us. So how do y'all feel about wrestling going forward with no McMahons? Damn, that's, no that's going to be tough, man. man. Hey, so I got to get something off my chest, man. What's good? You two guys was arguing at the Rumble. Oh, so I'm going to take it to the pod, man. Oh, I'm gonna God. take it to the pod. <laughs> Y'all gonna make I me do this on the pod? Of course. I want to ask you, brothers, man. Is Punk the right choice for Seth at WrestleMania 40? You know the is answer, bro. CM Punk the right choice for Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40? I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Who you want? Who you want to go first? Uh, who you want? Seven. I, I, I want you to go first, Seven. The answer is yes. Absolutely. CM Punk is still the right one for Seth Rollins. At the end of the day, this hmm. is the money feud, man. Like, look, I look, I'm for all intents and purposes, I don't really care about Cody versus Roman at this point. Like, I know where this is headed. I know what's about to happen. I can smell Solo Sokoa from a mile away. <laughs> I already see his hoodie. I see his hoodie. I see his hoodie popping up six months from now. You know, who is it? It's Solo. <laughs> I see the guy already happening. And it it look, I see him pulling up and ruining that match a mile away, bro. But the money feud is CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. Now, Seth Rollins hates this guy, CM Punk. CM Punk doesn't understand why. It's probably because Seth Rollins is jealous of CM Punk. CM Punk made this guy. And he can say he has a career without Seth Rollins, but Seth Rollins can't say that about CM Punk. And that's really, really unfortunate. I, if CM Punk versus Seth Rollins doesn't happen, there's nobody else that Seth Rollins can go against that would be compelling to me. There's no, there's nothing else that Seth Rollins could do at Mania that would make me go, wow, I want to watch that match. There's nobody. I don't want to see Seth Rollins versus L.A. Knight for the world heavyweight title. I don't want to see Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton for the world heavyweight title. I don't want to see Seth. I don't want to see him against anybody for that world heavyweight title at WrestleMania again, uh, un, unless it's CM Punk. That is the haymaker match. There is no other match that sells money. And for you to tell me anything else is a lie. Hmm. And that's that's real. And on top of that, if Punk won that Royal Rumble and he challenged the Tribal Chief, I would be highly disappointed. <laughs> I would yeah, be like, uh, what uh, nah. are you doing? So, yeah, that's how I feel. It's Punk the man that should face Seth at the Royal Rumble. At WrestleMania. Cooley. Oh, at the WrestleMania. At WrestleMania. I don't know why I said the Royal Rumble. <laughs> at WrestleMania. Cooley, let me ask you a question, bro. Let me, let, let me answer your question with a question. Let's say you and a guy get hired at a at a job, right? Same time, both really good at your job. But this other guy, he's really good. Like he's really good. So he gets promoted. This 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 company gives him the world, right? And you you're really good too, but they you know, they give you a pat on the back every once in a while. While they're giving this other guy the world, he gets disgruntled, right? He gets disgruntled because he just wants more. He feels like they're not giving him enough. So now he's coming mm. to work angry. He's getting into it with his coworkers. It gets to the point where he has to walk away. Like, the company fires him. They fire him. He doesn't go easy. He's out there trash-talking the company, bad-mouthing bad them everywhere he can go, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, to the point where the company has to sue him. They have to sue him. Meanwhile, you're still at this company working hard and just getting a pat on the back. Eventually, this guy goes to another company, a new upstart company, right? But they rival y'all company. And in this company, he's still taking shots at y'all company. But then the same thing that happened at that company happens over there. So he gets into trouble over there. He starts fighting with coworkers. He can't get along with anybody. Eventually, they fire him too, right? Not to mention, you're still at this other company working hard, working your ass off. 
and barely getting any recognition, just a pat on the back every once in a while. The company you're at decides to bring this dude back after getting fired from where he was. They decide to bring him back. And they don't even tell you. you just out there working one day. You walk into work, and he's just there. They don't even tell you they're bringing him back. He's just there. And all of a sudden, they want to promote him ahead of you. Let me know. Would you be cool with that? That's, Would you be cool with tough. that in that scenario? Oh, Would you be cool with that? That's tough, man. I, I'm not going to hold you guys. I'm going to be hot. You going to be hot? hot. You going to be hot? All the work I put in, you know, I'm going to be hot. Oh, that's funny you say that because that's exactly what's going to happen if CM Punk gets this match for Seth Rollins and he wins that match. Like, look at Drew McIntyre. Look at Sami Zayn. Look at Kevin Owens. These are all guys who have been grinding in WWE for years while CM Punk was over in AEW taking all the shots he could at WWE. Trashing the company, trashing the idea of WrestleMania being two nights, trashing the idea of Saudi Arabia. He had nothing but negativity to spread when it came to WWE. And now you're telling me that he should come in and main event WrestleMania over the guys who's been putting the hard work in for the last 10 years? No, bro. No. CM Punk, I love him to death, but he is not the answer for Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. It's mm. not good. It's, it's right for business, for sure, but it's not good for morale. Nah, let's get him out of here. Who, who do you think? Right Drew McIntyre. Mm. The one that cut the ropes? Yes, bro. Mm. Uh. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. <clears throat> Drew McIntyre's contract is over after WrestleMania. and He, he has not re-upped. He oh. hasn't re-upped for a reason, bro. <laughs> if oh, CM he Punk, out of here. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Look at man. Quan, the comparison was insane, man. Kind of remind me of Kanye with Adidas and Nike and all this crap that he be going through with stuff. But uh, I definitely would be pissed. But I'm going to go with seven with this one, man. Ah. Seth Rollins and CM Punk is the right story, is the right match, man. I don't want to see nothing else with Seth. I don't want to see nothing else. They've been brewing this feud for the past, since he's been back, which was in, what, November? I and it's just, it's, just, it's perfect. It's per you rather see Drew? I'd rather see Punk versus Cody. I just don't feel... You know, I just you know don't Cody feel like not... Co I just don't feel like he deserves it. He don't deserve it. Uh, life isn't no. about... Life ain't even about what you deserve. It's about it what you get. It don't matter. I mean, it does matter. This is life we're talking about. This is business. Business that's, that's is like not a deserving saying, thing. That's like us saying Shawn Michaels and Triple H don't deserve the spots they're in right now because of what they <laughs> did in the past. They don't. <laughs> To be honest, they but don't. They, but they got it. <laughs> yeah, they got it, bro. But they got at the it. end of the day, here, at the end man. of the day, it is They're what here. it is. I can't, I can't bro, believe y'all. It's, not my, it's not my fault Drew McIntyre is Drew Whack and Tired. It's not my fault <laughs> Sami Zayn can't Sami get over Zane as an underdog baby of face the greatest to save story his life. in that wrestling history. of a whole faction. That was hot before him, and you it already know matter. what time it is. Either yes, way, <laughs> either He's way, Sami Zayn had one of the greatest moments in the Royal Rumble thirty history. The crickets. We did and not now care. He's not doing anything. Good. He, he shouldn't be doing anything at all. CM goddamn he punk. should take himself and look in the mirror and say, "Hey, what can I do to make myself more interesting?" Because right now, I'm stale. Right you know now, what do? I you know am what Honey Night Cheerios. You know right what now, do? I'm Frosted Flakes. Yeah, okay. it's cool. I'll so maybe, it. maybe this I don't is really like Zane. it. It's so not maybe like this I is what Sami Zayn should do. Maybe this is what Sami Zayn should do. Maybe Sami Zayn should start going to work disgruntled and get into fights backstage. He and should. Then get fired and bad talk the company. Maybe Spice then they'll up. give him a good spot. Yeah, that's maybe right. then they'll give him. That's a That's what CM Punk had to do. Remember what CM Punk was doing? He was stale as grits. Around here having lukewarm title defenses. But he and was just not though. Strolling along. CM Punk and was And then hot. what did he do? He, just, he came out and he made himself hot. He got disgruntled. He rattled the cage. What did Cody Cody Rhodes do? He left. Do something. Oh, do you want or do you just want to hope and wish that you get your spot? WWE gave CM Punk the world, man. They gave that boy a two-year title reign and he was still disgruntled. You know why he was disgruntled? Because he wanted C um, John Cena's spot. He didn't like that John Cena was on the posters. He didn't like that the show was centered Nobody around John Cena. Nobody liked that John Cena was on the posters, except for children. What are you talking about? Like, I, <laughs> this is the real thing. Like, he inspired a whole generation. Yeah, man, everybody hated He him. inspired Cody Rhodes to be Cody Rhodes. Like, at the That's, end of the day, money is money. Bullshit. Cody Rhodes everything is everything that, that CM Punk, Punk says Everything he is, that bro. CM Punk said, Cody Rhodes did. Am I yeah, right? That, 
Yeah, uh, he, no. Cody Rose was really the 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 trailblazer. Let's He's not the forget. one. Yeah, but the but Cody he, Rose left and started an entire company and then got hot. CM Punk sat at home until he saw what Cody Rose was doing and then went and joined that. Like, let's and, be and honest. what happened? And what happened? He pulled back up, hotter than he's ever been. And who mm. is he? And who and who was he in the final two with? Cody hey, Rose. La- last time I checked, he was getting booed in that final two. Of course. The final two was 2021 AEW. <laughs> Hilarious. And that's, that's crazy. really crazy. That's really that's actually crazy. That's actually wild. That's wild. Yeah, we don't talk about that guy anymore. The I mean, final you know. two in the Royal Rumble were both in AEW two years ago, and, and Tony Khan fumbled the bag. That's definitely Hunter, bro. If you think Hunter's not doing this on purpose, like... Yeah, you think he's man. not sticking it to AEW. Like, yeah, yeah. Bro, I, like, swore it was, I swore it was gonna be Gunther and Punk at the end. Yeah, I was insane. like, oh, that's a safer choice, but you know, here we are. I can't believe here you rolled with Sylvan on this, bro. I, I, I got really of course. I believe. Like, I got to. I got to see bro, that. that. That's crazy. That you was just, fun. You though, want that. you just want you just want people to 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 get things because it's the right thing to do. That doesn't exist in life, man. You get you get no, what you but are. We yo. need we need to make that exist, man. We can't reward people for bad behavior. I mean, he's he's rewarded for being Make hot. Him Business work. doesn't Make have CM behavior. Punk work for it. CM Punk was in that ring gassed, bro. He entered what? What number twenty six or twenty seven? Yeah, By he the was time gassed. they were he, in that he, final two, he, he could barely move, bro. And man, he and you that cardio you work. To, yeah, and you telling me you want him to be champion? I don't. You want I'm him not, to get a WrestleMania main I'm event? Say, I'm just over saying. Drew McIntyre and I, Seth Rollins. I, mean, I want. I want. Zayn, Kevin I Owens, want LA Knight, AJ Styles. I want to watch a product that makes me go, wow, this is a great show. <laughs> I want to watch right. t- television and be like, wow, I'm having a good time. I'm not going to have right. a good time watching Seth Rollins go against anybody, bro. In fact, I'm over Seth Rollins being champion Seth after Rollins WrestleMania. Seth going through book it right now, man. <laughs> I don't I'm, want I'm, it. I'm... I don't want it. I don't want it. I want to see Seth Rollins go against CM Punk, and then I want Seth Rollins to right. lose. And I want Seth Rollins to go. I want him to become a part timer because champion, he's bro. old and he's CM paper Punk mache. And then I want CM Punk. He wants to see CM Punk. I want world CM champion. Punk to be a world champion because that's what's going to put dollars in seats and that's what's going to make two me matches, say I two should matches watch into Raw. His, two matches into his WWE run, and you want him to be the champion? Absolutely, a, power. A house, a house show, <clears throat> and a mid Royal Rumble, and you want him to be champion? Absolutely. That's I'm sorry. To see I'm Seth sorry. Seth and Becky versus CM Punk and AJ Lee. No, I don't. I don't want to see. That. <laughs> I definitely don't. I hate that. <laughs> matches. It's like yeah, I hate the mixed tag matches, man. Get that out of here. You, get you out of here. Ah, forget about it. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe you rolling with Sylvan on this, man. Oh yeah, because uh, he's a smart man. Yeah, I can't. Because cool, he's smart. Sylvan on this. I got that you, was man. fun though. We should make this a thing. We should. We should get a debate rocking every week, man. Let's. We could call it like homie warfare. We can get a title made and everything. Right Facts. now, you the homie champion, warfare. Right homie wow. warfare. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You got the title right now, though, but. I'm coming for you next week, baby. Straight facts. Yeah, I, I want to know how people feel at home, man. Let, let us know how y'all feel at home, man. Should CM Punk get that match against <laughs> Seth Rollins next week? I mean, next week. At, at WrestleMania? I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, Quan would we, rather we are... watch Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins. What's wrong with God. Drew McIntyre? Look, it's I, nothing wrong. We That's the, the problem. What's wrong with Drew McIntyre, bro? Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is... held WWE down during a Three pandemic. years ago. There were wrestlers the old that days chose to not come it's to work. The old days. Drew McIntyre was still no. coming to work every anymore. night. You know why they put the title on that guy when duty. nobody was watching? Because nobody cared about Drew McIntyre. Nobody hey. cared. And you know what? Hey. That hasn't changed now. The only people who care about Drew McIntyre is the crowd. And the crowd is starting <laughs> to not even really care the about Drew McIntyre. The only thing that- they don't care, bro. We don't care. Drew McIntyre is a great wrestler. He's a specimen. I think he's a draw, <laughs> but do I want to see him go against Seth Rollins for the third time <laughs> at WrestleMania? Absolutely not. I can't think of <laughs> one thing that would be more compelling. I would rather watch paint dry and listen <laughs> to jazz music from the 20s <laughs> than to watch that match, bro. I would rather eat I would rather eat grits and salmon unseasoned <laughs> then watch that match 
I would rather, bro, I would rather listen to a KRS One album in 2023 <laughs> over trap beats produced by Metro Boomin than to watch Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania 40. You have got to be out of your mind for the third time. <laughs> Oh my God. Hey. <laughs> hey, I just, we don't want to see that, man. What is wrong with this man? What is wrong with this man? We don't want to see that. What is wrong with this man? I'm just saying, Seven bro. Seven deserves that crash out, man. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see it. <laughs> like, oh, man. Like, we don't want to see that. Yo. Go home. Sylvan's crash out is becoming one of my favorite parts of this podcast, man. <laughs> I like... I like purposely troll this man just to get to the crash out, bro. Bro, like, Quan really, he Quan really be trolling me. Dog. I'm like, oh, dog, just yeah, like, jazz in the twenties is crazy. I don't want to see no goddamn Drew McIntyre. You, know you feel like Adam yeah, Sandler? Yeah. And, uh, I just want, I, I had to get it out of you, brother. You feel like Adam Sandler or Waterboy? Like, hey, yo, you gotta, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Waterboy. Nah, but in all in all seriousness, though, um, Seth, Seth Rollins versus CM Punk will be ill. Um, I definitely think that he should have to work a little bit harder to get to the spot. But, I mean, if they're going to give it to him, they're going to give it to him. It is what it is. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to be one of those guys that go go online and cry about it because my favorites aren't in that spot. It is, it is what it is. I would, I would love to see Sami Zayn get that main event just because I feel like the 2022 that Sami Zayn had was incredible. So, like, let's at least reward him with something since he couldn't beat Roman. Let's give him something. But at the end of the day, if it's punk, then it's punk. That's real. It's punk, it's real. baby. It's real. It's clobbering time. Anyway, man, that was insane. Uh, the Nation of Drizlam, Um, I don't know if y'all taking, <laughs> taking um, <laughs> applications, but um, after, I think Sylvan has convinced me. I want to join the Nation of Drizlam, bro. Nation of Drizlam, baby. I got to get t-shirts Whoa. made. Whoa. What Crash Bandicoot said? <laughs> Whoa. Who the got? Who the got? Cooley, man. Cooley, 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 cooley. What's good oh, with the man. rundown, man? Let's get into it. What's Let's going on? We're going to start with Bailey. I yes, called sir. this two months ago. Yeah, he called, he did. I called this he two months it. ago. He called Bailey it. Bailey sure won it. the Women's Royal Rumble, a match that yes, included Naomi's return Woo. and a shocking appearance by Jordan Grace, which is the knockout Woo. champion for TNA. And that's crazy. Jade Cargill's in ring debut. Yo. This was dope, y'all, man. Let's talk about it. First of all, Naomi came in at number two. Me and Sutter yeah. was just pulling up. We were just pulling <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, y'all were outside. Right, got y'all missed the entrance, bro. Just pulling up. I was yeah, in the group chat like, bro, <laughs> Naomi in here. <laughs> I was like, oh, she back. Let's get it, man. So that's a beautiful sighting. We did not get a mercedes Monet. It's not sighting. happening. Yeah, she going to AEW, stink up the joint. A Go wrestle in front of 2,000 people every night, baby. Come on, man. Don't do that. It's I'm just saying. Good. It'll be nice. Yeah. It's better. Shout out to that. Bailey, man. Shout out to Bailey. How did y'all feel about the Women's Royal Rumble? It was better than the Men's Rumble, for sure. Facts. Mm -hmm. For sure. They had uh, more debuts, right? Jay Cargill, Jordan Grace. She was showing out. Jordan Grace. And that's insane. Mm. Like, TNA Ooh. Knockouts champion in WWE. Like, that's the real Forbidden Door. I know Triple H kind of took a shot at the Forbidden Door, but, like, that's the real Forbidden Door. WWE and TNA, hey, we've we been we've been saying that they've been cooking something on the low. I'm just saying. But, yeah, Bayley deserved it. It made sense. Uh, I guess we're going to get Bayley versus EO Sky at WrestleMania, and it's going to be great. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be great. It's going to be ill. Um, I would have personally loved to see Sasha Banks return just because Sasha Banks is Sasha Banks. But um, if AEW is really the route that she's taking, I wish her the best. I think she'll be incredible over there. Um, Sylvan's, <laughs> I didn't like that comment she made about go stink up the joint in front of 2,000 fans because, you know, Sasha Banks ain't never stinking up no joint, bro. She's one of the greatest women's wrestlers alive. So give her her respect, bro. Oh, okay, yeah. All Give right. her her respect. Yeah. And it was yeah. dope seeing Naomi back too, yeah. her beautiful self. You know, I think I think Sasha's really dope, man, you know, but we're not going to act like Sasha is not a you know, not a, not a botcheroni herself, you know. Yeah, she botches a lot. I ain't going to hold She botches you. a lot. She, she botches has a lot, a lot of she's very shaky in the ring sometimes, you know. Nah, she's as, great. She just botches. For, yeah, as great as she is, she's very botchy. You know what I mean? Mm. That's what All I mean. All the women be botching, bro. Yeah, but you know, Sasha <laughs> be botching a lot. You know, bo Sasha botched yeah. her debut. 
Like, what are we right. talking at, at New Japan? What are we talking about? Like, <laughs> what? Are, like, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't. <laughs> she I, did. She did. Like, she did. Like, why, like, why are we acting like, like, like you know what I'm saying? Don't make me look crazy out here. Like, you know, I'm, because look. she fine, bro. We fine. So she fine, so we give her a pass. And also, her friends Boom. are crazy. And I don't want no. I don't want no smoke with <laughs> Sasha Banks fans. I want no smoke with Sasha Banks fans, bro. Yo, None. I love Sasha. I love Sasha Banks. I, I just, I just call a spade a spade. Everybody's got to get, get told what their truth is. Unless I like you, then I'm biased. Um. The women's rumble was the best match of the night. Um, I want to st- I want to start by saying that uh, Chelsea Green, you are a national treasure. Yes, bro. Thank you for taking all those bumps. Um, I think you and Piper Niven had an incredible dynamic in that ring. I thought it was really really fun. Um, Nia Jax, I'm very <clears throat> proud of your performance. Uh, you still had a few botches, uh, you know, eliminating a few people, but it's clear as day that you know you are truly improving and um you know i gave you a lot of hell on this podcast you did i really did you know what i mean but i'm i will call a spade a spade when i see people improving you did fantastic in that ring and um you, you are really making me excited to see you in more matches um i mean jordan grace i mean come on i mean like come on bro like you know I, do i have out. to do I, do I even have to say yeah, anything? she did my only she regret is that out. she didn't stay longer because there's so many other matchups that i would have liked to see her um, or face-offs, at least. Um, and then, you know, Jay Cargo. I mean, come on. You know, the Oro Jay Cargo. Seeing her and Bianca Belair stand off one against each other was like watching Goku versus Vegeta, bro. It was just like, wow. Like, two specimens. Like, I don't... It's just like... It's one. It's like the female rock in, in Stone Cold to me. Um, right. We're not... This is a once-in-a-lifetime time, like, time, like match up in my opinion and i'm just really great that really glad that we we're getting that in this time uh bailey winning is without saying very very important I'm really glad she won it's the best story that we're going to be able to tell um i love seeing the return of Liv morgan i, I love Liv morgan i think Liv is really great mm. um and i think i mean i know how you feel i just like Liv morgan no, as I- a I also, like her too. Also She's Tiffany dope. Str- also Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany like, Stratton. Like Stratton, Tiffany bro. Stratton. First of all, Tiffany Stratton is the next Charlotte Flair. Let's just let's just get that out the way. And she is easily probably the most talented um woman wrestler on that roster, but probably one of the most talented wrestlers, period, right now. Um, and she showed out <clears throat> for the short amount of time that she did have. She is a specimen. Um, she's flawless, and she a baddie. So I mean, like you, you checking Bad all the hell. yeah, you checking all the uh, boxes, checking all the man. boxes. So yeah, oh, I can't forget boxes. Roxanne Perez too. She Roxanne Perez, too. Roxanne Perez went crazy, bro. Went super Roxanne crazy. Went crazy. Um, also, what's her name? Why is she blinking with me right now, man? Um, LWO. NXT? LWO. Oh, oh, Zelina. Zelina, Zelina. Yeah, Zelina can't Vegas. can't go without saying Zelina had a great break, breakout performance. I think everybody in that ring in the women's division was showing out. They yeah, went fact. crazy. Yeah. They were going super crazy. Everybody, everybody's reaching for that top spot. There wasn't one weak link, man, and um, that shows a lot. So, men, y'all better step it up. Facts. And shout out step to Kyrie up, Sane. She had a crazy spot where she like a caught herself on the apron. Spot. Yeah, and, like, just yeah. held it like Spider Man or something. I'm like, how is this like, how possible, is she bro? doing that? How did she, she could have pulled herself position? back up? I don't know. I thought they were yeah. going to pull her back up, but then like somebody like kicked her out or whatever. But yeah, how did she even yeah. get in that position to begin with? That was nuts. I don't know. Yeah, man. that was crazy. The women like, man, killed out there. Like, women killed. They she killed it. Absolutely incredible. Shout out to the women. To the women wrestlers. Let's get into some business, man. Let's get into some business. We all saw it this week. WWE announced a $5 billion 10-year deal with Netflix. Damn. That is crazy. <laughs> Sheesh. That is Damn. crazy. I'm so starting in... What? So starting in January of next year, Monday Night Raw will air on Netflix. That is a complete game changer. I don't know if my, my monthly will go up. I'm already paying $15. <laughs> that is crazy. Crazy, and I only watch like two things, <laughs> like literally, <laughs> like Stranger Things and Wednesday or like our beat, like, <laughs> like, uh, bro. Like, oh man, but I go front. I be watching them my love shows. Love is blind, but you oh know, nah, no, man, brother. Uh-uh. I, mean, you know, I'm engaged, man. Come on. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah. I might do. I'm, I'm, I'll do loving, loving WWE when that drop. But uh, I can't do them, them scripted ass love shows on Netflix. <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't yeah, no way. Man. But this is crazy, bro. WWE on Netflix. This is the first deal of its nature, right? Because like, yeah, I know the NFL is doing some streaming stuff with like uh, Amazon and all these other things. But from my understanding, those games are usually like simulcast, right? 
Like they'll uh, be on yeah, national yeah. TV and on streaming. Like, mm-hmm. But WWE Raw is not going to be on TV. It's going to just be completely on streaming. That's crazy, bro. That's yeah. insane. <clears throat> My question is, Raw baby, are that's a hard shirt. That's a hard Appreciate shirt. It. If y'all don't, if y'all didn't see his shirt, man, this man has a WWE. Yeah, Raw it's not a, jer- it's not a shirt. T-shirt. It's a jersey, isn't it? It's a jersey. It's a jersey that's man. crazy. Yeah, jersey, Fire. Man. Yo, shout out to Cooley's wardrobe, man. It's the attitude but, um, era, baby. My question is: Are wrestling fans gonna want to shift over to Netflix? Because I know, I know, I know, humans are victims of habit. Like we fall into habit of doing things one way, and we kind of can't break that. So, watching Raw on TV for thirty years, are we really gonna just shift over to Netflix? A lot of people might not do it. To be honest, I I think so. I think we're underestimating how many people don't have cable. Um, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people don't have cable, and everybody I know has Netflix, bro. Facts. Everybody either has Netflix or has access to Netflix or um, has somebody net somebody's Netflix p- password. Um, I think it's a smart move, and it's a way into the future. Uh, and also, what does Raw have to prove? Right, you've been nationally syndicated for sixteen hundred days. Yeah. You know, they just passed that uh that milestone. So I think Crazy. this is a great way for them to to really monopolize the competition, honestly. Like having a live syndicated show on Netflix. Like, do you understand how many people have Netflix and that don't watch WWE or don't watch wrestling that could possibly be popping on Netflix and be like, Oh, let me see what's popping. Right. Yeah, I, I ain't seen this in a long time. I ain't seen this in a long time. Oh, this is on this is on Netflix? What? Like, bro, That's it's insane. it's is um, this is an unprecedented deal, and I think it's gonna change um how a lot of shows move for, um at least a lot of nationally syndicated shows move forward but i mean then again who knows because this is wwe right this isn't like basketball or football or right. nhl where there's a built-in audience and it's a completely different dynamic but this is great for wwe this is perfect and this is like uh, a, lot, a lot of people who were like skeptical about this move I see them presenting it as if WWE is completely on Netflix now. But like let's let's understand what we're seeing. The second most watched WWE show is exclusive to Netflix now. The number one most WWE watched show is moving over to USA. So SmackDown is still on cable. And then we got NXT on CW, national TV. Everybody got CW. If you got a TV, you got CW. And then let's not forget. The WWE Network is still on Peacock until 2026. Facts. So WWE is pretty much covering like every ground, bro. It's kind of insane to witness. That's the only reason why I had Peacock, by the way. Five oh, billion. Of course. Of course. Wait, yeah, y'all sleep like, on Ted, though. Y'all sleep on Ted. Yeah, I'm going to keep Yo, sleeping, too. No, bro. Ted on, <laughs> on, on Peacock, bro, it's the funniest show I've seen since like the original Family Guy. I swear to God. Dang. Bro, it's, it's the original funny. Family Guy, bro. It's like funny, funny, bro. I be watching The Office on there. Hey, anyway, yeah, everybody watched The Office, and I, I was watching Bust Down when I was out. You know, Freddie Gibbs. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That show was funny. Yeah, that show was, that show was hella funny. Just yeah, after 2026, after 2026, I don't know, doggy. So my thing is, know. where's the network going after 2026? Like, do you think they might move the network over to Netflix? If they were smart, they would. That would be insane. Bro. It's a lot of con- like, it's a lot of content to host. But on it don't episode. it it don't make sense though. Yeah, like they should try to cover all their ground, bro. Like, why? Hey, sell sell the network to Hulu. Why? Like, why not? Let's get, let's get a Hulu, Netflix, Damn, CW. Like, Hulu. Let's be everywhere. Spread out, baby. Spread out. Pause. That spread out. Pause. <laughs> Big pause. pause. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> uh, shout out to the <laughs> <show. Okay. laughs> And Netflix, man, that's a dope move. I even have people that don't, that's not into wrestling like that anymore, coming up to me about these type of moves about Netflix, and it's it's a beautiful man. thing. It's uh, Vince good. too. I ain't old you. A lot of people was coming yeah, up to the, me about Vince, yeah. being like, "Yo, you see Yo, this?" Everybody, I'm like, <laughs> bro. And I, you know, you know, you know, you know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we move on, man, you know what makes me upset? This is just a a personal thing, right? Like, I I hate when like my homies. You know what I'm saying? Be coming up to me like, oh, y'all better talk about this on the pod. I'm like, bro, who do you think we are, bro? Like, what do you think <laughs> we do? Like, what do you like? Like, people are like, oh, did you see this? Do you, what do you, why, why would you ask me if you think I saw this? <laughs> like, do you know this is what I do? Bruh. Like, don't, don't you know this is what we about? Like, did, you just saw it. Don't come at me Literally. asking if I just saw it, bro. <laughs> they gonna of course this. I saw it. Like, how you gonna send us the biggest story, like, in the world that has to do with wrestling and be like, oh, y'all better talk about this? Like, of course we gonna talk about, talk it, about bro. it, bro. Like, 
that's all we've been talking about in a group chat for two days. Like, what do you mean? Like, of course we're gonna talk about it. Wrestling bro. with the homies, baby. Get used to it. Make sure you subscribe, by the way. If you're yeah. not, if you're not, you crazy. You wildin'. You made it this far in the yeah, video man. and you're not subscribed yet, man. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe. We ghost watching ASAP. ASAP. Don't be a ghost. Hey, you guys, let's talk about AEW real quick. Um, let's switch gears real quick. Um <laughs> Forbes recently I, just, I don't know why that made me laugh. I just looked at Sylvan's face, man. Cause yeah, man, we got it. We got you know, so, you know, Sylvan got some bullshit to say. We've been talking about a whole lot of WWE, so let's you know, let's talk about AEW real quick. What's going, what's going on in um, AEW, man? They've been struggling to move <laughs> tickets in the year 2024. Um, the article referenced Dave <laughs> Meltzer, who recently compared AEW's current inability to move tickets. To WCW in 2000. <laughs> Damn, wow. man. Damn. Why do you Damn. Why do you guys think AEW's ticket sales are struggling? Do you Do you think it's because CM Punk <laughs> left, <laughs> or do you think <clears throat> I don't know? It's just too much moves going on with bigger <laughs> promotions. What's go What's going on there, y'all? That's tough. You, know, you want me to take it, or you want to take it? Quan, look, take it, man. You take right. it, Quan, because you already know. All right, look, saying. man. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest about this. I think that WWE being scorching hot right now is the sole reason that AEW's attendance is falling. Like to be honest, I think that a lot of AEW success is unfortunately contingent upon WWE not being good. So when WWE is hot, AEW is cold, and that's just what it is. Um, I know Sylvan is probably going cite Tony Khan and his terrible booking as the reason that AEW's attendance is struggling, but like Tony Khan been booking the same way for four years now, and their attendance wasn't always bad, so I think it has more to do with WWE being hot right now. Mm. Worst five years of the company is underway. <laughs> what did I tell y'all? I told y'all, Tony Khan, I'm gonna keep saying, every time we got we bring up some type of disdain with AEW and low ticket sales or just low profit shares, whatever. I'm always bringing it up. I said it. He's in for the worst five years of the company's existence. And that's because he has to actually be a company owner now. Tony Khan has to be a company owner. He has to figure out how to get his his company popping. He started this company off the contingency of WWE not being hot, like Quan said. And now that WWE is hot, he has to figure out why they're going to still be here long enough for people to actually care. And it doesn't help that half of your roster are former WWE washed guys and the other half are AEW grounded guys who just haven't gotten to that main event status yet. You're, for goodness sake, like your AEW champion is a former WWE guy. Like you, like there's, what do you want me to say? And then your your MJF is gone. Like he's injured. Adam Adam Cole can't even wrestle and he's leading a faction. Adam. You know that, <laughs> that that's in a feud. I, uh, Why is he leading just, a faction and he can't wrestle? Can't they could have saved wrestle. that storyline. The guy to can't even later, wrestle. Man. He can't even He got a walking boot on and he's the leader of the faction. Like why they they could have just stretched <laughs> that out until he was ready, man. Edge is crazy cuz Edge is having like Brutal matches with um, <laughs> Garrison Griff Garrison <laughs> and like Lee Moriarty. Like, what what are you doing? Man, what are you doing know, side man. missions, bro. Like, I it's just, I, it's just like, look, I, 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 I think, I think, um, Tony's just gotta ride it out because it's not gonna bad. get better for a while. We been comparing this to to WCW too, which is crazy, right? Like months ago, WCW I should have never bought. Like I think Tony Khan should have never bought Ring of Honor because it it really made no sense. It's like we we're already struggling to book this one show, so like why buy a whole other company? Like it was just like I get where he was going because he probably wanted to own that library because Ring of Honor got a classic library like it's matches with like Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, like all these guys, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. So he probably just really wanted to own that library, but. The fact that he bought Ring of Honor and is trying to like book shows while also continuing to book AEW Dynamite and Collision and Rampage is like, yo, we we doing too much for one man, bro. It's yeah, it's 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 getting messy over there. It's getting I mean, messy, but I, I hope I mean, it gets together. 
Also, I mean, like we're gonna be real. Like Tony Khan doesn't really have vision. Like the wrestlers around him have the vision. He just you know, got the money. <laughs> he just has the money. Like the guys that have the vision are the Young Bucks, um, Hangman, freaking it was Cody Rhodes, and, and then um, and then Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is is on leave. The Young Bucks are. We already know where Cody Rhodes is, and hangman is doing his wrestling thing so it's like he's really he's now really being left to run a company and have a vision for it and we're seeing that he doesn't have one you know and all the people who also were around him that knew how to actually build out a show are gone like people really knew how to build storylines and compelling tv and narratives are all gone so Mm -hmm. yeah we're seeing the results of someone who doesn't know how to run a wrestling company so you know that's just how i look at it yeah we'll so figure. you know tony 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 <laughs> get it together brother get it together <laughs> man get it together. we'll figure it out man i believe in them figure believe it out them. figure it out because one of your wrestlers matt hardy has been talking <laughs> on oh. god's internet <laughs> he's been saying he's been saying a lot of things of what AEW needs to do so according to matt hardy He's basically he's basically saying that having five star matches and bangers are great, but storytelling and characters that people can invest in is more important. And of course, that's <laughs> yeah. why we're attached to wrestling. Yeah, we like the storytelling. It's what makes wrestling great. So if you want storytelling, come to WWE. If you want to see just bangers, go to AEW. It's simple. What is Matt Hardy talking? Like it's simple. <laughs> he knew this. He knew this. Yeah, man. So I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. Of course we agree with this. Yeah, like, facts. You- like yeah, Matt what? Hardy is absolutely not wrong, and I, I I really wish that Matt Hardy could talk to Tony Khan and get him to understand this, because um, when I saw Edge or Adam Copeland, let's call him by his name, Adam Copeland. When I saw Adam Copeland go down to the ring and have a a, a banger with Griff Garrison. It really upset me, bro. It really made me mad because I'm like, having a match like this does nothing for Edge, bro. It does nothing for Adam Copeland. All it does is lower him to the level of Griff Garrison because what you're doing is you're presenting him on the same level as a guy who wrestles on Rampage in Ring of Honor. And you should never be doing that. Like, look at the way WWE has presented CM Punk, for instance, right? Like CM Punk has only wrestled once since he's been back. And that was at the Royal Rumble. But every time CM Punk is on TV, WWE beats you over the head and makes you feel like it's important. They treat CM Punk like it's the most important thing. They were advertising CM Punk and Cody Rhodes promos like it was the main event of Raw the other week. So it's like, I see one guy being presented like that while I turn over to AEW and I see edge on rampage wrestling griff garrison and lee moriarty and bangers like come on man like having a five-star match is cool but that's not gonna get people invested we're invested in storylines we're invested in characters so i agree with matt hardy 100 percent. i think a lot of these former wwe guys come over to aew with the notion that they would know how to book storylines and create compelling characters and build uh to feuds that actually matter and then when they get in the company and realize that that's not what's happening it's just like wait what and then they start to realize how much of how how wwe and doctrine they actually are um versus like the other side that they've gone to and like that's matt hardy right that's that's cm punk like that's that's literally Andrade. That's, that's Andrade. Malachi that's, Black. Uh, Malachi Black. That's Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Rusev, bro. You know what I mean? Rusev. Like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Rusev. Like these guys come over and they realize, wow, these these people are running, like the wrestlers are running the asylum. You know, and then you have guys like Chris Jericho who understand that wrestling companies are different fundamentally, right? And that AEW is not WWE, but. Chris Jericho has been around for a long time, and he's wrestled for virtually every single company except maybe TNA. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So he understands that different companies work different ways. And that's what's allowed him to be uh, as present as he's been. You know what I mean? And then you see a guy like John Moxley who just doesn't care, right? He just wants to bleed. And he's <laughs> he like, I can't bleed on WWE. I just want to do what I want to do. <laughs> I, I'm gonna bleed. I get to bleed over here. I'm happy, right? Man. So, like, I, I, I mean, Matt Hardy is definitely 100% right. 
Um, but I mean, that's wrestling though. And that's what you get when you have uh, an owner who doesn't come from a wrestling background. He doesn't come from, he's a billionaire. He just likes wrestling. So it's, it's going to, it's just, this is just going to be a tough time, man. It's going to be a tough time. Um, I hope they make it through. I hope he stands the test of time, but I know you don't, bro. <laughs> I really do. You I, don't give I, a you don't give a goddamn whether they make the, it through or not, bro. Here's Let's the thing. Honest. Here's the thing, man. You're catching me at a time when WWE is its hottest. If this man, was five years hottest. ago, I'd be I'd be pooping all over WWE. Like every day. I'd be like, yeah. all Elite is doing X, 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 X. And did you see this? And did you see that? I'm unbiased in what I like. And I know that doesn't make any sense, <laughs> but it's the truth. If I like something one day, I like it. And if I don't like it the next day, then I don't like it. It just is what it is. I'm not going to force myself to like something because I'm not, not digging it anymore. So shout out to you, Matt Hardy, for telling the truth. Shout out to Matt Hardy, man. Shout out to Matt Hardy. Let's talk about uh, Booker T, man. He said some interesting things on his Hall of Fame podcast. Five time, five time, five time. He is working hard as he possibly can, that is, to sign and get Jacob for two with WWE. Now, <sighs> another one. We know where this another is going. Another one. Oh, oh, no. Wait a minute. Bro. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a, minute. Wait a goddamn Yo, minute. Booker, Booker T dropped. He he dropped some some some, some bombs. Wait, wait. Wait a minute, another bro. Another one, bro. So you're telling another me. You're line. telling me. You're telling me that. Cody Rhodes is getting his rematch <laughs> at WrestleMania, and ben, and Booker T is working hard to get Jimmy Fatu Check. over to WWE. And Jimmy WWE. Fatu is a member of the NOI family, which means he's a member of the Bloodline. The Bloodline can't make this up. Ain't no way Damn. Cody Rhodes is winning this match at WrestleMania, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if he ain't got, if he look, if if Jay is out the way, if Solo is out the way. If Jimmy is out the way, we got Jimmy Fat or is Jacob Fatu now. Jacob like, come Fatu. on, man. Like, like uh, how he many... gonna come and interrupt <laughs> the match? Oh my god! It's like, bro, bro it's too it's too many goddamn bloodline members, man. Where are these kids bro, coming they from, bro? Deep. They hey, deep, bro. They, they deeper than in the roots, Street. bro. Remember, you know the roots from uh, <laughs> oh, hilarious. <laughs> Black Thought and Quizlove, like, uh, it's like the deep. roots, <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, insane, though, man. I mean, we we can't go wrong with anybody coming to the bloodline because it's been great. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, maybe this can spice up the storyline. We need that. a little we bit need because it. it's been spice. dead going on. It's been dead for technically a year now. A so, year. A yeah. year. So that'll be dope. Shout out to Booker T. He he really do that. Um, sure. Jacob Fatu you know. nice too though. Jacob Fatu, yeah, like, I'm letting y'all know right now. Yeah, Jake, I, Jake, I, I saw his clips online. Jake, like, he not he not like <laughs> solo. He not gonna just stand there with a hoodie on and his arms folded. Like he he be out there doing moon salts and like <laughs> rope dives at his size. Like Jacob Fatu yeah. is nice. So I'm I mean, I'm I'm with it. Jacob is nice, man. You know, but also you know, but it's like, is he gonna be WWE nice? I don't know. Mm. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with Solo, right? Like Solo was it's a different solo in NXT than he is in WWE, right? Like, yeah, it's a completely different. Man. So yeah. it's just kind of I my my main it's I I don't have any qualms with Jacob Fatu coming to WWE and joining the Bloodline. I I keep saying it, my main qualms are with the Bloodline. I'm so disappointed in the Bloodline this year, man. It's been filler. It's been nothing. Nothing's been going on for a year. Hey, Jimmy been carrying it though. The bank carrying, it, bro, <laughs> man. Carrying it, man. Carrying it. No dog. yeet. Hilarious. No yeet. He hilarious, dog. I know they be wanting. I know they be wanting to bust out laughing. They be wanting to laugh <laughs> so bad, bro. I'd have been laughing, bro. That was my me and my brother. I'd have been like, ah, oh, this. He is looked at Gunther and said, <laughs> <laughs> "That was the funniest moment of the Rumble, man." They're trying to dap up everybody, yeah, man. Facts, right? Shout out to Booker T if he really gets this done, man. That would be dope to see Jacob in WWE. Now, let's yeah. get to some juicier news, man. Let's get to some. Somebody didn't show up at the Rumble that everybody thought would show up, and his name is Okada. He didn't. He didn't oh, yo. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't show up. He didn't show up. So he has. Yeah, that's that right. He would, he would not be resigning with New Japan, and he's entering free agency. 
I would know say where, where does going. he land, but we kind of know where he's we going. Know. Being we that know. he didn't show up in the wrong move. That boy, AEW bound. Yeah, fact. <laughs> Let's <laughs> just be honest, my brother. Damn. As ill as Kazushika Okada is, fans in the U.S. don't really know him like that. And because of that, WWE is not about to overpay Okada to bring him in. Like Now, I'm sure WWE wants him, but he's not going to get top guy money. He's not going to get five mil like a Roman Reigns or a Brock Lesnar. But the thing no. is... We know who will overpay him, and he got blank checks. His name is Tony Khan. Tony Khan is going to do all he can to get Okada into AEW. So that's where I'm going with it. I, I think Okada is going to end up in AEW. I would love to see him in WWE because it would be something different than what we've seen, but he's going to go where it's safe. He's going to go to AEW, and it's going to be very lackluster. The crowd is going to react one time, and then nobody's going to care a week later because we've already seen him wrestle in AEW before. Just like Will Ospreay, just yep. like Jay White, just like yep. the rest of them. Yep. Bring on the uh <laughs> bring on the bring on another one to the roster. I have, I don't really have much to say about it except for TNA could possibly make a vouch for it. I mean TNA has been popping right now. Hey, but um he, he but, going crazy. I mean he appeared he, over there the other week. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, it could be it could be a thing, man. I, I really love what TNA is doing right now. Um I think Okada is going to AEW. I don't really think Okada would gain much by going to WWE unless he just wants to like go there. Um, in my opinion, I just I, I don't see much of a of a gain for him. Um and yeah, I think Juan is right. Like overpaying this guy is not in the question. And Okada is a star. He's a super he's like a world superstar. He's not a um he's not a American WWE superstar, you know, but he is like Okada is when you talk about wrestling and you mention Okada is like yes. So right. there's only one guy in this market that I know would be willing to honor that, and that is Tony Khan. So Tony Khan, man. See you over in AEW, my guy. Shout, Shout out to Kazuchika Okada, Okada. Shout out to Okada. Now let's talk about our boy Mustafa Ali. He mm-hmm. is hey. TNA bound. He is TNA bound now. He is joining our brother, AJ Francis, Nick Nemeth, yes, and Dana Brooke. Yo. TNA doing some big things. TNA, man. man. Money. <laughs> Moving mountains, baby. Where are they getting this money from? Now, that's the question. Because it seems like they're bringing everybody in. Like, damn. It's, what, it's, yeah. it's, it's they laundering really? or something? Like, what's going on? I don't know, I don't man. Know. That I think PPP it's loan? <laughs> I think it's dope, man. They got a hidden PPP loan or something. <laughs> they got, yeah, they got a PPP loan, bro. Like, they getting where are they getting this bread? Uh, I said it last week. I think Mustafa Ali is a star. So, if he's his starting point is TNA, then I'm all for it. I still think... Mustafa Ali is going to end up in AEW at some point down the line. But for right now, I'm down to see Mustafa Ali in the TNA. Let's get it. I'm down to see Mustafa as well. I really love what TNA is doing right now. Um, I do think it's kind of crazy that uh, they're they're really collaborating with WWE to the extent that they are. It's just kind of like, dang, like, you know, Nick Nemeth and Ali really can't get away from these guys. But I do think it's cool, man, um, that Ali is going to be pulling up. And um, I, I really love everything that Ali is doing right now. It it very much reminds me of like when Cody Rhodes was moving, you know. Like, yeah, facts. Yeah, and even Nick Nemeth, you know, I think Nick Nick Nemeth is really like on some like menace to the people stuff right now, and I, I I'm just really excited to see everybody move the way they're moving at TNA. TNA doing anything, man. Yeah, sh- shout out TNA, man. Shout out to facts. Mustafa Ali and all the other ones. You feel me? That's all I got for the rundown today, fellas. Sheesh. Yes, sir. All right. Well, man, look, man, yes, we sir. appreciate you, my brother. So y'all know what time it is. One of my favorite segments of the show, Black Wrestler of the Week, because I love showing my love, giving my flowers to our favorite black wrestlers, both past and present. This week, I want to do something a little different, though. I think my nomination for Black Wrestler of the Week is actually not a wrestler at all. It's a journalist by the name of Cameron Hawkins, a.k.a. Seahawk, our boy. He was at the Royal Rumble, and he asked Triple H a hard question. You know, A hard he question. Asked, he, yeah, he asked Triple H, um, what was WWE putting in place to ensure that people in power can abuse it and use it against people that are employed by WWE? I thought that was a real ill question. He didn't beat around the bush. He went straight to it. And I also think that is it's it's important to give flowers to black wrestling journalists. He works for the ringer. And like, you know, it's the black wrestling journalists, it's not a whole lot of them. You know what I'm saying? And wrestling is a very white dominated 
like arena. So it's dope to have someone like Seahawk out there asking the hard questions. So shout out to Seahawk. You my black wrestler of the week. That's fire. Shout out to Seahawk, man. Uh, my black wrestler of the week is Carmelo Hayes. Uh, I would like to say that I was not familiar with your game, Carmelo. I was not familiar with your game whatsoever. You were not at all. Not uh, at all. It's not familiar with him. your game. I tried to tell him. Yeah, I just thought you were the guy that, you know, wrestled really nice and uh, looked like Lil Bow Wow. No. But, <laughs> but, but I was Carmelo not familiar Cole. I was not familiar with your game. And um, I thought you did an incredible job at the Rumble. Um, obviously, you've been doing an incredible job at NXT. I'm not as tapped into NXT um, as my fellow brothers Cooley and Quan are. And I need to be more tapped in for sure. Um, but I thought you definitely did an incredible job at the Rumble. Um, you've been having some incredible spots on the main roster in general. Um, but I just think like bar none, you being in that rumble, it seemed like you really belonged and the spots that you did have and the, and the, uh, the performance that you displayed was bar none. So you are my black wrestler of the week. I hope we see, see more. And, um, I hope you do get a chance to really retire some jerseys. So facts cool. yeah, it can only be sure, one brother. Man. Who we, got, one, man. Man. Who we got, man? Who we got, man? Shout out, shout out, Carmelo Hayes. Shout out, Seahawk. Um, it's a beautiful thing when we have our brothers in big rooms like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it to Carmelo this, 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 this week. Uh, it's dope seeing this guy put on bangers after bangers after uh, you know the past couple years, and he's finally getting his shot. This man entered the Royal Rumble. While WWE is at its hottest. So it's just, I know he's feeling great. He's ecstatic and it's a dope feeling. And I want to get my followers to Carmelo. Hopefully we can get him on the show and we can Facts. talk about it. Talk about why he still wear that hairdo. <laughs> 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 Shout out Carmelo, man. He's dope, yo. <laughs> That's my guy, though. That's my guy. You can see the happiness in his eyes when his music hit and he went out there and he yeah, saw 40,000 people. He like, yo, this is a little different from NXT. Facts. Shout out. Shout out. That was dope. Shout that out Seahawk, man. Shout out Seahawk. Yeah, yeah, shout out Seahawk. Seahawk. We going to be there with you one of these days, right, man, right, very right. soon. We actually, uh, we actually met him uh, at Wale Mania. Wale Mania, um, yeah. When, when, we, when me and Cooley first arrived together, you know, Cooley was doing yep. his, like, he like did like a crossover move in front of some old white guy, and then Seahawk was walking <laughs> past, and he's just like, yo, he don't know what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, man, shout crazy. out to Seahawk, man. <laughs> Seeing him in that, those big rooms and asking the hard questions while everyone else is like, so, Bailey is the champion now. Like, what? I was like, nah, like, let's get to the real stuff. So, shout out to Seahawk, man. You, Fact, shout out you're Seahawk. doing your thing. You're doing your thing. Uh, should we do some more awards, man? Should yeah, we, we should. Some more awards? Look, so Why I not? had this idea. I had this idea, right? I want to give more props. I feel like the wrestling space is a very negative one sometimes, especially online. It's a lot of negativity, but um, sometimes you just got to give people a little nudge and let them know that you see them. Now I'm saying so like, I want to call this the, we see you awards, you know, and I want to give my first, we see you award to Scott Demore, man. Scott Demore is doing some incredible things with TNA for a very long time. TNA was kind of off the map. They were hot and then they kind of just fizzled out a little bit, but I feel like, Right now, TNA is doing some of their best work. Um, the fact that we saw Jordan Grace in the Royal Rumble was super ill. The fact that she was out there representing TNA currently with the Knockouts Championship around her waist and really getting it in. Like, she was in there showing out. That was super ill. And then TNA is bringing in a lot of guys. I just saw Will Ospreay on Impact a week ago. Jeez. I saw Okada on Impact. Moose is the new world champion. TNA is doing some things, man. TNA is really getting it popping out here to the point where, like, I'm starting to think that they might be the number two promotion in the U.S. I'm just saying. So, like, Scott Demore, I just want to let you know. We see you. We see you. We definitely see you. All right, man. I want to give my uh, We See You Award, my first We See You Award ever, to uh, Chelsea Green. Um, look, at the end of the day, Chelsea mm. Green in the Rumble, uh, I know uh, – you have like this nuance because I know you're nice, but you also have this nuance of being able to play the comedic role, but in a way that's very endearing. And you really gave us a great performance with your um, energy in that ring. You get taking all the bumps that you took uh, and also like, you know, alluding to having like the record of the fastest eliminated uh, wrestler in the Royal Rumble history. Uh, I think I just thought you had an incredible performance. And um, I hope this is a show of more of you coming into uh, your own. And so I just want to say 
Shouts to you, Chelsea Green. Keep doing what you're doing, and you know, we see you. Definitely see you. Definitely see you. See you, Chelsea Green. I want to get my first We See You Award to Jade Cargo. You know, we've been seeing her, you know, for the past couple of years at AEW, for those who don't know. Um, she's always had the look, she's always had the the, the aura, but the in ring, it just wasn't there. And seeing yeah. her at the performance center at, over these past three months training with Natalia and all and all the rest of others. It's shown at the Royal Rumble. She's really stepped it up. She stepped it up big, and her presence was just so big coming in at number 28. And she's here now. She on TV. We here. Let's get it. We got more black women wrestlers now, and I want to see that stare down again with her and Bianca. And, absolutely. of course, with Charlotte Flair when she comes back from her injury. You know, we're not getting Jay, that match next Mania. We ain't getting that <laughs> we, match we next Mania, bro. They definitely going to make us wait a year for that. That's going to be fire, though. Yeah, yeah facts, yeah, facts. Yeah, Jay, we see you finally here, man. You did Absolutely. Thing. Look, shout out to Jay Cargill. Shout out to Scott Damore and TNA. And shout out to TNA legend Chelsea Green, man. We definitely Chelsea see Green. all three of y'all, man. We definitely see y'all. Now, fellas, y'all know what time it is. We got yes, the sir. love. We got the love and affection out the way. And now <laughs> it is time to pack them uh, up. The most infamous things in wrestling. This week, I have to pack up an independent wrestler that goes by the name of Mitch Page. Damn. For this spot that happened in IWA Mid-South, which is Ian Rotten's promotion. So shout out to Ian Rotten, ECW legend. Mitch Page decided it was a good idea to wrap a cloth around his head, set it on fire, and attempt to do a flaming, diving headbutt. Now, obviously, this went wrong, because why would it not? He ended up burning his face, (laughs) and as he jumped from the top rope, the cloth fell off, so he didn't even hit the spot. He just landed on the wrestler. I think it was deranged. He landed on him without the burning cloth on his face. That was very, very dumb. It was very dangerous, and it was also very ridiculous. Like, it was stupid. It was stupid. I'm sorry. Apparently, this spot took place maybe five or six years ago, but it's going viral right now. So, Mitch Page, you got to get packed up this week, bro. Do better. Ne- never do that again, please. Never. Never. Ever. That's wild. Eesh. My gosh. All right. Let's just get straight into it. I am packing up Triple H. Hunter Hurst Helmsley for skating over the fact that his father-in-law is facing some of the worst allegations the company as a whole has ever seen. In a press conference at the Royal Rumble, Hunter was asked about Vince's allegations by a few reporters, and he vehemently chose to focus on a positive, and he even had a remark where he said, y'all can finish it for me. Mm. Mm-hmm. Y'all can finish it for me. Uh, uh, everything yeah. possible <laughs> everything possible what are we doing to avoid everything everything possible and while i admire a positive mindset there's a difference between being positive and ignoring reality and hunter you chose to ignore reality you are my favorite wrestler and it hurts me to give you this pack but choosing not to address the elephant in the room head on doesn't exhibit the type of company leadership i'd like to think your locker room would like to see exhibit it from a morale standpoint. And yes, while WWE has had a tremendous week of unprecedented highs and further, while I understand Vince McMahon is your father-in-law and very much your family, simply focusing on the positive shows me that you're not ready to deal with hot waters and uncomfortable situations, which granted, I get it. You are still adjusting to be a adjusting to being a corporate face of this company and that doesn't make you exempt from this pack. And plus, you had your chest out on that press conference, and it was pink as hell. You look like a cooked turkey, bro. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Cover that up <laughs> next time. Yeah, that was a bad ten. Cover that, that up, man. It was really bad. Hey, hey, bro. Bro. You're getting Button this pack. Up. You're getting this pack, man. It was so. It was, one two. I, I'm sorry. This one. <laughs> one two. This pack. Said, what are you doing hey, to avoid man. everything? That man said everything possible. Everything possible. possible. <laughs> <laughs> Everything well, possible. Realistically, though, what was he supposed to say? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's tough, uh, man. Just, just a, just a, a tough spot more to be in, bro. Clean answer, you know. I choose to focus Everything on the positive. Everything possible is crazy, bro. Everything possible, like, Everything is, crazy. Is, possible. Crazy. Everything is possible. It's crazy. <laughs> well, my pack for this week. <laughs> I'm gonna switch it up. It's Brock Lesnar. Hey, 
one Wilders, packing up yeah. Brock Lesnar. Now, I want to be on record to say that these are all allegations. All allegations. But these are terrible allegations, Brock. Brock, you are a legend in the game. You have a beautiful family. You have a beautiful wife by the name of Sable. We all know her from back in the days. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Are you fumbling your family? You're fumbling your 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 chances to end your career on a great note. You wasn't you had you was in the rumble. Now you're not in a rumble. We might not ever see Brock versus Gunther. And I want to see that match so bad. Damn. And I don't think that's happening. Damn. And I just feel like what were you thinking, Brock? Ah, man. It's just, you getting this pack, man. And the fact that I read where it said that Vince persuaded the victim to mm-hmm. get Brock to sign back that contract. That's how he came back? That's insane. That's how you came back? That's, That's insane. crazy. That's insane. That's, That's crazy, and that ain't all he bro. did, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. He did a lot. We can't really get into it, but he did a lot. Did yeah, a bro. Lot. Uh, you see, you can... You getting packed up, Brock. You getting packed up, man. Hope you throwing them logs around somewhere, man. But... <laughs> the logs. Yeah, man. <laughs> killing oh, mooses, killing mooses, and hunting. You know, you know what Brock be on. But yeah, man, that is Brown Breaker. Yeah, so shout out to Brown Breakers. So apparently, Brown Breaker took Brock's spot in the Rumble, and all those eliminations that Brown Breaker did were supposed to be Brock Lesnar's eliminations. But you know, Brock yep. had to go and run amok. With Vince McMahon, and that led to you know the replacement. We bro, really I had not to tell need... a lot. I had to tell so, a lot of people that don't watch NXT about Braun. I'm like, bro, bro, Braun is the guy one. is the one. Braun <laughs> is the one. I haven't seen bro. a wrestler in NXT so ready. Like, bro, explosive. Braun Breaker could be world heavyweight champion right now on Raw oh, or SmackDown, God. and it would make sense. Like, he's that ready. But yeah, Let's man, go. Brock Lesnar, bro. If we're never gonna get Brock Lesnar versus Gunther, that sucks. It's that sucks. never happening. But then it's again, never, never, never retire. You know, he might retire. I, I, I mean, at this point, I don't think that WWE is gonna risk putting Brock on TV. Yeah, that's nah, right. he's like, Let's that's not real. forget when these allegations came out, and they're all allegations. We will keep saying that, even though I one thousand percent believe all of it. It was. It's all allegations. Facts. When this came out. It didn't seem like anything was going to come of it. Like, it was just like WWE hadn't really addressed it. It was just like out there. And then Slim Jim was like, yo, we are pausing our relationship with WWE due to this allegation. And as soon as that happened, Vince McMahon was out. So it's like, if sponsors are starting to pull out from the show because like these allegations, then I don't think that it's smart to put Brock Brock Lesnar back on TV. Like this, 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 this might be it. This might just be how Brock Lesnar goes. I don't know. We've seen people return with worse. Like who? That's for another pod. Like I don't know. Let's throw a name out there. Like who? Man, I don't want to say nothing, man. Because just I got throw friends. a name you know, out Hulk there. Bro. Hogan. Throw- Hulk Hogan. You know and saying? on that note, we are Man, out of here. here. We will see y'all next week with another episode of Wrestling with the Homies. I am gone. Peace.